Hi everyone and welcome to WordStream's next live webinar designed specifically with agencies like you all in mind, the seven step formula for agency growth. My name's Amanda and I'll be your co-host for today's session. And for those of you on the line that don't know much about what WordStream does beyond our content, um, we offer a software that can manage and optimize your clients, Google, Facebook, and Bing ads all from one place. It allows you to prioritize and budget across your book of business, share success with your clients through customizable white labeled reports. And then our newest and most exciting edition of the new business center helps you prospect and pitch new business and convert them into clients all in one place. Um, and we'll touch a little bit more on that later. Um, as far as logistics go, this webinar is being recorded, um, so you will be able to get the slides and the recording to your inbox within the next 48 hours. And while we're here today, we love to hear from you, so please submit your questions. We'll do a live Q&A at the end. Um, and this is especially exciting Q&A because today on the line, we also have a client with us. So um, without further ado, I'll pass it off to my co-host, Alan, and then we'll introduce our client, Jeff. Hello everyone. As Amanda mentioned, I am Alan. I've been at WordStream for just over four years. I started on our managed services team, so that's our in-house agency. Uh, then I moved to our content marketing team, and now I work in product marketing. Uh, a bit more about me, I usually have my eyes open, although I don't in this picture. Uh, I'm from New Hampshire. I'm a massive Boston sports fan. So I'm very excited right now. We'll continue to be through Sunday, and then we'll see if I make it to work on Monday morning. Jeff, tell us about you. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, I'm the client, um, Jeff. Uh, if you're confused by my last name, don't worry, everybody is. Um, it's pronounced Sibba Savage. Um, so I've been a WordStream client um, since July of 2018. Um, <clears throat> And I am the digital advertising specialist for Golden Proportions Marketing. Um, we are a full service dental marketing um, agency um, out of uh, central Pennsylvania. Um, so outside of work, I am uh, married just over a year um, and I have three girls. Um, so I'm in a house with all women. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and I am a, uh, rabid Pittsburgh sports fan. So um, I'm not quite as excited about Sunday, um, but I'm still happy for Alan, you know. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm happy for you. Um, so a little bit about, um, more about me. I um, went to Pennsylvania College of Technology, um, which is in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. If you know the Little League World Series, you know where Williamsport is. Um, so that was kind of cool. Every year we got to, uh, you know, watch the parade and go to games and stuff. Um, so I graduated in 2015 with a uh, bachelor in uh, web and interactive media. Um, after school, I was kind of, you know, just looking for jobs floating around. I wasn't sure exactly what in marketing or web design or um, anything that I wanted to do. Um, and I found Golden Proportions Marketing um, and accepted their uh, paid search position that had just opened. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't specifically looking to get into like a verticalized, you know, uh, type of marketing, especially dentistry. I never thought that I would, you know, be working solely with dentists. Um, but I, you know, I've come to enjoy it, um, and I've learned, you know, a lot not only in paid search, but also in dentistry, which I never thought I would know, you know, more about than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so before we get into the bulk of our material today, a bit of an introduction to why it is we're talking about uh, verticalized agencies. And as Jeff mentioned, Golden Proportion specializes in dentistry, but there are a, a thousand and one different verticals that you could operate within, and there are advantages and disadvantages to all of them. Um, one of the biggest reasons that, that people choose to verticalize, though, is that it's easier to position yourself as an expert and to find clients uh, because they know that you are a master of, of their space and your craft. 
So our State of the Agency uh, report, which we release annually, and this year's will be coming out uh, within the next six weeks or so, uh, from last year, agencies identified that the biggest challenge that they tend to face is client acquisition. Jeff, is that something that you can speak to at all? Um, yeah, definitely. I think that's what we are constantly, when marketing for ourselves is trying to get leads to come in, trying to find new clients. Very tough, especially mm -hmm. when you're focused on working on your own client accounts. Exactly. Um, and for, for many agencies, verticalized or not, client referrals are the, the biggest source of net new clients. Uh, while some will go out and prospect, they'll run their own digital marketing campaigns, kind of eat their own dog food. Um, or they'll go to trade shows and events, they'll upsell or cross-sell other clients. Referrals is the bread and butter of many agencies. Uh, unfortunately, referrals are, are a well that can run dry quickly. And even if you do have a very satisfied client base, all of, all of whom have incredibly extensive networks, you're still going to have to do some kind of prospecting at some point during the lifetime of your agency. You cannot just rely on word of mouth, right, Jeff? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we still have a good amount of referrals that come in, but it's, you know, you can't rely on it solely. Absolutely. Which means at some, at some point you are forced to go out there into the wild and prospect. So there are thousands of agencies, some verticalized, some that specialize in, in different uh, executables. So some just do paid search, some just do SEO, some are full service. Uh, they're all vying for, various advertisers in various verticals and there's nothing wrong with being somebody who wants to work with a CPG brand and uh, an insurance company and whoever else plumber down the street but it can present challenges when it comes to both prospecting and scalability uh, the biggest issue with this kind of scattershot unfocused prospecting is that there are a ton of different kinds of clients. So here, for example, you might have a pool of, of prospects or maybe even existing clients made up of lead gen, made up of SaaS companies with long sales cycles, e-commerce companies, brick and mortar stores looking to drive foot traffic, nonprofits with tiny budgets and various regulations you have to deal with. Um, all of those different kinds of businesses require different strategies. So for a SaaS company, maybe you have to deploy some account-based marketing and you have to uh, retarget across a ton of different networks for months at a time before you can push somebody from introduction to your, your marketing material to signing on the dotted line and actually becoming a customer versus an e-com company where really there's a tiny portion of the year where you're going to spend almost all of their advertising dollars and that will make or break their businesses different kinds of stress levels, different kinds of strategy, different platforms that you're advertising on. It can all get very, very confusing. Uh, and frankly, it doesn't scale well at all. It's better to be an expert. Instead of saying, I work with three dozen different kinds of clients, although good on you for having three dozen clients in the first place, uh, it's better to be the person who knows the ins and outs of a single vertical and knows how to maximize ad spend across all channels for that kind of client. It's also important to verticalize because pitching new business is kind of a job unto itself. Uh, as you can see from all these beautiful screenshots from Mad Men, pitching is a huge part of both massive ad agencies and one man shops. It's very difficult to get in front of a client or put together a proposal and customize it to their exact needs, price it out so that it works for them and it works for you, and send it. It's even harder when you're working across a ton of different spaces, a ton of different verticals. Each new business pitch becomes a process all on its own. There's very little that you can reuse and recycle. Uh, and, and then you're going to be in a position where you have to hire somebody whose sole 
role is to acquire new business instead of being able to share that among uh, account managers. What should you do instead? In a word, you should verticalize. Verticalization, very simply put, is picking an industry, the expert plumbing league, boils down, you are the expert when it comes to vertical. I, I basically boil it down to scalability, expertise, the ability to offer more services, ton of applicable testimonials that you can leverage, and bottom line, fewer competitors. So in terms of scalability, picking a vertical allows you to replicate strategies, sometimes even entire accounts across we'll use dentistry as the example since we're using it as the example today across the board, uh, there could be some instances where you have a lot of overlap. So you can swap brand names, you can swap geo parameters, you can tweak ad copy here and there, uh, and you change your landing page URLs, but ultimately the, the scaffold of your account, the bones of your account are gonna be very, very similar. Uh, th this can change your, your ramp time for a new client, uh, to a process that takes a couple of hours instead of weeks. Before we uh, move on to industry expertise, Jeff, any insight on the um, the scalability component there? Um, no, what you said, I completely agree with. Um, we we try to do that all the time when we find something that works. We you know, test it with all our other clients. And, um, you know, is there's always going to be certain things that might affect that, you know, where they are in the country, or if they're in a big city, a more rural area, but um, you can definitely still use that, you know, core skeleton of a campaign or a landing page or anything um, and test it and see if it works across the board. And like you said, it saves so much time um, especially for me, um, you know, I don't have to spend, you know, the days or the weeks, you know, researching something that I don't know anything about um, <clears throat> when I already have a pretty good understanding of dentistry now. Absolutely. And you just brought up two great points that I completely glossed over, and that's the, the benefits extend outside of just rudimentary account creation. It's the research that precedes that, which can be a massive headache if you're dealing with something like a cybersecurity client and you need to learn the potential pitfalls of Node.js or something like that and then pivot over to dentistry and then think about generating leads for your plumbing or locksmith client. Um, and then the, the sort of higher order of thinking, uh, advanced strategies, if they've worked in one place, odds are you can pivot that value over to your other clients if they uh, operate in a similar industry. And uh, that's just gonna increase the value you represent to them and then hopefully their, their life cycle with your agency. Um, the next point here is, is industry expertise. So it's easier to build a reputation for yourself and for your agency quickly when you are focusing on a specific audience instead of just blasting information out into the ether, hoping that everybody in every industry finds it to be applicable and uses it. While it's not impossible to do this, there's so much competition, uh, and we'll, we'll get into this a little bit later in terms of doing keyword research and, and figuring out spaces that you can take uh, advantage of uh, from a, a verticalization perspective, but there, there's so much competition for, for marketing terms that if you're trying to establish yourself as, as a thought leader, there are a million and one people who have been doing it for longer already have a following. But if you want to become the marketing expert in X vertical, you're, you're starting with a, a lot fewer competitors. Um, really this kind of specialization is not a, it's not a shtick. So here you see Rand Fishkin, the guy who founded Moz and now Spark Toro who when he first started speaking at events would wear a silly pair of bright yellow shoes. Um, while this is one way to stand out, <laughs> actually being an expert, which he most certainly was and is in, in the SEO space, 
um, will will do wonders for your marketing when you're looking to e extend outside of your your pool of customer referrals. Um, an another thing, another another valuable component of verticalization is that because you don't have to spend your time uh, learning the ins and outs of a bunch of different industries, you can offer more services within the industry you do focus on without having to spread yourself too thin. So yes, you could just offer paid search, paid social, display advertising for the vertical of your choosing, but maybe because you're an expert in the space, you know what kind of branding, what kind of messaging, what kind of color, what kind of voice and tone resonates with people in the space, and you can begin to speak to those services and offer those kind of services as well. So it lets you just really become stickier in, in, in terms of your clients and the value that you can deliver to them. Uh, next, you have infinitely applicable testimonials. Uh, sometimes when you get a client testimonial, uh, and I'm going to start sounding like a broken record very soon, but if it's for a lead generation client and you're trying to pitch an e-commerce client, it can be really hard for the e-commerce client to see the value uh, that you could deliver based on the word of somebody who does something completely different from them. Uh, if you have testimonial that says, I helped business just like yours succeed, it becomes much more powerful in the eyes of your prospects. Uh, it's also easier to create these kinds of, of case studies and collateral because you have such a deep understanding of the industry. Uh, Jeff, is there? How do you guys leverage testimonials at Golden Proportions? Um, I mean, like you just said, if you know somebody's going to a to an agency that you know works with everybody, um, you have to dig through testimonials to try to find somebody similar to you. Um, you know, those testimonials might not help if you're just looking at all these random ones who are in you know different verticals than you, and um, you know all of our testimonials are dentists so already it's someone who's similar you know if we have a prospective client who's looking at our testimonials <clears throat> all of these already you know kind of fall in the realm of the problems they're having and then it's going to be much easier for them to find a testimonial that's like oh my gosh this person is just like me you know and they solved their problem and that gives them the confidence you know to know like I'm going to contact these people. I want them to do what they did for this person. Great. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, the, the next thing that that's worth noting here is that there are just fewer competitors when you verticalize. Uh, so if you look at these two SERPs, uh, you see that if you search dental marketing agency uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania where people like the Steelers, uh, you'll see ads for golden proportions, uh, but if you just search marketing agency, you're going to one get very large agencies that are that are likely spending a ton on their own advertising and are looking for much different sorts of clients, um, and and two there are going to be a ton of them. There are going to be three ads and ads on the bottom of the page, and then they are going to remarket you into oblivion and and eventually you simply cannot compete with that as a as a smaller agency but when you are targeting niche terms only verticalized terms only uh, and then you can really focus your message to the people who are making those search queries it's much easier to make things like paid search work well for your agency it's it's kind of crazy how often we talk to agencies whether they're uh, current customers or their prospects or I have a couple of friends who run small agencies and they they don't use paid search or paid social for their own marketing despite the fact that they that's what they do for other businesses because of things like competition because they don't verticalize they don't focus on these these niche terms okay so I've made my point Jeff has helped me illustrate my point that verticalization is super valuable for an agency, but what does it actually entail? What does it actually look like? Uh, the first step is to is to do that initial research. So Jeff, as, as you mentioned before, 
you get to skip this part when you take a new dental client on board because you are already a subject matter expert, but it wasn't always that way. So how did you learn about dentistry enough that you can advertise it? Um, well, I mean, just a little bit of our background of our company, our president Zanya, like her husband was a dentist. Um, so that's, you know, Great that was starting her, point. exactly. That was her in to go verticalized within dentistry. Um, me coming in as a client, as a, not a client, a, uh, you know, employee, um, knowing nothing about dentistry, uh, having her husband, um, we were able to, you know, go over to his practice, which is, you know, in the same town. And he was able to teach us, you know, just some ins and outs of dentistry, um, you know, things that he markets, um, to help us. And a lot of it is just, you know, it, it took a little bit of time for me to get used to it, but, you know, it was much quicker than if I would have had to go, you know, research plumbing or research, you know, all these other different um, things. I was able to just constantly every day, you know, only research dentistry. That's awesome. Out, so what did the research process look like outside of leveraging the subject matter expert there? Um, just looking at, um, you know, some of our current clients' websites, um, look, you know, reading, um, a lot of reading. Uh, the good thing about, you know, dentistry websites, which <clears throat> unless you're looking for a new dentist, you probably don't find yourself on that too you know, often. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but the point of those websites is to, try to explain different procedures um, to people who know nothing about dentistry, who are, you know, might be looking um, to get one of these, you know, dental procedures, dental services done. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, and then really was just trying to learn paid search um, on my own and kind of in my head, how can I apply this to dentistry, which is, you know, selling a service, first of all, um, and not, you know, you're not selling a physical product. You're, you're selling a service. Um, then, you know, just, just trying to constantly, how can I apply this to dentistry? It was, I think in my head more than anything. Cool. Yeah. So, where you just mentioned specifically how you could apply things like paid search to uh, dentistry after you had acquired that initial fundamental baseline knowledge. Um, this is kind of where I would suggest if you don't have the benefit of like really going into a business and talking to a practitioner, uh, you can use benchmarking tools. You can use some keyword research, research tools to uh, either uncover – extremely costly verticals or extremely low cost verticals uh, when you're trying to develop a specialization, uh, a vertical that you would like to be the, the king of from an agency perspective. So we release annual benchmarks for uh, Google Ads and for Facebook at WordStream. You can use these uh, to look at search, social, and Facebook see where costs per click are extremely high. You can assume that the businesses there have comparably high marketing budgets or they probably wouldn't be marketing. Um, a lot of the people operating in various spaces do use agencies, uh, particularly if they're small businesses themselves. Uh, it's unlikely they have a full in-house marketing team and paid search, paid social, uh, are, are things that are outsourced with relatively high frequency. Uh, and if they've used a generalized agency in the past, it can be pretty pretty easy to say, look what I can do for you, leveraging something like the case studies that, that Jeff mentioned before, uh, once you are kind of the master of the niche. Uh, so if you check out these uh, Google Trends graphs over the last 12 months, you can look at keyword search data uh, for different kinds of marketing. So 
we can look at the trend line for dental marketing, legal marketing, plumber marketing, hotel marketing, spa marketing, really insert anything before marketing and have a ball here. Uh, and you can see that there is there is a decent bit of volume. I'm probably not going to choose plumber marketing if I'm looking for a vertical because the volume is so much lower. But any of the other ones, perfectly viable options. And once you've taken a look there, you can you can go even deeper. So look at the keyword planner. Uh, or use a, a different keyword tool, use SpyFu, SEMrush, uh, our free keyword tool, and take a look at what monthly search trends have looked like lately, uh, whether things are trending up or down, what kind of competition you might be facing uh, in these spaces. Uh, it might also be worth looking at cost per click here to see how much you would have to pay uh, to effectively market your own agency. Um, as you can see here, it looks like dentistry has very high average cost per click. So, Jeff, how do you guys uh, market golden proportions effectively uh, despite that? Um, testing. Uh, you know, we, we have to find, you know, dental marketing, yes, is a very costly keyword. But if you look at the average monthly, monthly searches, um, compared to some of the other ones, it's it's kind of finding that battle of how much can I spend? Can I afford to, you know, market this keyword because it has so much more searches? Um, also trying to just nail down, you know, your landing page so that every one of those clicks is, you know, hopefully turning into a call or a conversion or something. Um, you know, looking at uh, just just looking at the data constantly, you know, trying to um, get the most bang for your buck. Um, and that, that even goes with our clients as well. Uh, it, it can be, it can be a headache some days um, when you have like a small um, family owned practice who doesn't have, you know, the huge budget, like some of the huge multi practices that we have and you know, trying to make the most of you know the budget they can afford, um, and same with us. You know, we we have a budget that we can market for ourselves, and it you just have to constantly be in there, constantly be playing with it, and uh, doing your best to get that you know cost per click down as much as you can. Sure. Are there um, are there any strategies that just especially from like a from a paid search perspective that have worked for your agency that wouldn't necessarily work for some of your clients or vice versa anything that you've seen work for your clients that hasn't really translated back over to the agency marketing perspective uh thinking in terms of like best practices um nothing that i can really think of um you know we we kind of like, we expect, we love to practice what we preach. Um, so if it's something that we would do for ourselves, it's what we would do for our clients. Or if it's something we suggest to our clients and we realize we're not doing that for ourselves, we should probably be doing that. Um, <laughs> you know, and so you, you kind of have to like, we, we want to believe in what we're telling our clients to do. Um, obviously there's, you know, some different, um, things there because we're obviously marketing towards dentists and dentists are marketing towards everybody. Um, so, you know, when it comes to those high cost per clicks though, it's, it's really just, you know, trying to make sure you have, you know, your accounts squared away as best you can, negative keywords and just good landing pages and, you know, you're, you know, using other, marketing efforts along with your AdWords or, you know, or display or whatever you're doing as well. Totally. The uh, tried and true methods work across the board, regardless of space. Mm -hmm. So next, uh, after you have a tertiary understanding of the, the space you think you'd like to specialize in, it's time to go really deep. 
So we're going to go really deep on the dental industry today because Jeff is here with us. Um, if you take a look at this, uh, according to the ADA, the number of dentists in the United States is increasing. Uh, the average annual value of customers for these business these businesses is eight hundred dollars. So there are more dentists. They people who they see tend to be worth a fair bit of money, and that means that there's probably some marketing budget there to capitalize on from an agency perspective. Uh, so n now you're going to want to learn. The, uh, your niche's idiosyncrasies. So Jeff mentioned doing this by, by visiting with dentists and then doing a lot of reading. So consuming content, trying to interview or shadow experts in a space uh, for a couple of days is a great way for you to pick up tidbits of language that you can leverage in landing page copy and in ad copy. Uh, to make sure that those are as, as pertinent as possible to your new clients. Um, it can help you get a better understanding of how long sales cycles are and what people are focused on from a customer perspective and from a business perspective. Are there particular pain points that the businesses in the vertical that you've selected have to deal with and that their clients have to deal with. This isn't necessarily stuff that's going to be intuitive for you. Um, it, you really have to develop a thorough understanding of a space to, to realize that. So Jeff, you've, you've kind of mentioned that there were, uh, there are a couple of different problems that your dental clients tend to face. Uh, new patients being one of them uh, are there are there any other overarching problems that the the dental industry tends to face from a marketing perspective um, yeah usually the main one is always I, I need more patients you know um, and you know we try to dig deeper and get a little more specific with them and say you know what kind of new patient are you looking for um, you know are you are you looking for uh, emergency dental patients who, you know, might come in once and then never come back? Um, are you looking for, you know, pediatric patients? Are you going to, you know, that we're targeting parents then, you know, we're not, we're targeting parents whose kids need to go to the dentist um, or even looking at the value of each different kind of new patient. So, you know, a dental implant patient, could be, you know, a much more valuable client and more valuable conversion and your, you know, your ROI is going to be much higher um, than somebody like an emergency patient who is just kind of coming in for a one-time quick fix um, and you might not retain that, that client over and over again. Um, and, sure. you know, yeah, there's, and but it usually all stems back to I need more patients, whether it's opening a new location or I just opened my practice, um, I brought on a new doctor. Um, it's always kind of I need more patients. Sure. But knowing knowing the next level of questions to ask there outside of yeah. I just need new patients so you can figure out a, a real strategy uh, is, is key when you're when you're operating in a in a single space. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so then getting getting kind of to the numbers, uh, based on our research, our benchmarks, we can see that, that dentistry tends to be relatively expensive. They have like pretty, pretty middle of the pack click through rates across the board for both search and for display, uh, ditto for, for conversion rates and uh, pretty, pretty high cost per acquisition. Although as we kind of mentioned before, there's a um, there's definite value there. So if you're paying $150 for a conversion, if that conversion ends up being worth $800 or more to you, then that's that's a that's a decent little ROI. Uh, so next, we're going to talk about developing a strategy that that works and and more importantly, that scales. Uh, this means understanding what conversions look like and how much money they're worth. Uh, 
this starts with kind of reverse engineering uh, our, our overarching strategy. So if we know that a conversion is worth X dollars to us, uh, and then there are other kinds of conversions, so an email sign up versus uh, somebody booking an actual appointment, obviously worth very different things. How can we segment a paid search account, a display account, so that we are targeting very top of funnel people with low cost, low value offers to bring them into some kind of email marketing funnel, push them down and eventually get them to be a long time patient for us versus kind of capturing those emergency dental clients, uh, people who need a root canal and a new tooth yesterday. Uh, obviously we're gonna wanna pay more for person in bucket B right out the gate, but person in bucket A might end up being worth a lot of money to us over their, their customer lifetime. So being able to speak to both audiences and being able to build accounts that target uh, the different kinds of converters that the businesses in your vertical might see is, is super important. Um, so from a top of funnel perspective, this might mean using the display network, building audiences ba uh, based on their geo, obviously, uh, familiarizing uh, people with the fact that your clients are local, they live around where their prospective clients might be, uh, and then leveraging things like in-market and affinity, and affinity audiences or leveraging uh, one of the thousands of different uh, audience creation parameters within Facebook to really build uh, target customer personas. Uh, so that brings us to, again, kind of top middle of funnel using Facebook and Instagram to uh, leverage really engaging content, whether that's image or video content, uh, to show those different audiences uh, impressions across multiple channels to make sure that those impressions are impactful, uh, like particularly something like Instagram where it's less likely an ad is going to get lost in a sidebar uh, like you might see in Facebook or a single static image wouldn't uh, do justice where you you should have used a, maybe a carousel or a GIF. Instagram, the, the ads are like very well placed, very prominent, and provided you're using the, the right kinds of targeting parameters, you can leverage similar creative across, across a bunch of different clients within your vertical without having to do too much like work from a creative perspective. Uh, similarly, middle of the funnel, uh, we can continue using Facebook, Instagram, and then a bit of display remarketing to engage in hopes of acquiring leads. So this is where perhaps we would use a uh, Facebook lead ad or a messenger ad to help facilitate an appointment. Um, and you might want to leverage a similar strategy with high intent keywords. So I need a dentist today, something like that. Uh, and then on your landing page, uh, really going for an appointment booking, not just a informational download or something to that effect. Finally, when we're trying to close, this is where you would target any kind of transactional terms. Uh, obviously, these might be geo-specific depending on the kind of clients you're working with, but uh, you might be capitalizing on call-only ads here, uh, any kind of remarketing, retargeting across across different channels. Uh, and again, these are all things that are very much uh, fundamental strategies, but they're really efficient and easy to leverage and duplicate across multiple clients. They're going to perform for those clients and you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Uh, next, we're gonna touch on prospecting. So when you verticalize, uh, you have to prospect with purpose. Uh, you can't just use that kind of scattershot mentality. Now, I know that you know how to prospect if you are in attendance, you work for or run an agency of your own in client acquisition. Get out there and after you've chosen your vertical and start using your own expertise, setting up campaigns, making sure that your website speaks directly to the customers you want to attract uh, and focus on selling yourself, conveying your unique value to those people. Uh, maybe this involves something like, like good old fashioned 
marketing techniques. Direct mail is having a huge resurgence with millennial audiences for some reason or another. I think it's uh, the fact that we have terrifyingly large numbers of unread emails in our inboxes. Getting little pieces of real mail in real life just feels good for your soul. Um, so like, this is something you might want to do. Find a list, run through a phone book, use a search engine to identify people, uh, and, and send direct mailers to prospective clients in your vertical offering some kind of unique information. Uh, Jeff, is there any kind of unique marketing strategy uh, or something outside of the digital space that, that you guys at Golden Proportions are planning on leveraging in 2019? Um, 2019, we're, we're really focusing on, you know, continuing to prove that we are experts in dental marketing. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to focus on, you know, getting back into speaking at conferences um, you know, we, we've been creating a lot of content, um, trying to just give, you know, bits and pieces of, you know, like free downloads and stuff. Um, you know, trying to, we, you know, we were going to conferences and speaking a lot before, um, we kind of slowed that down a little bit. Um, and now we're getting back into it, but we're trying to find, you know, smaller intimate ones, um, where we can try to find, you know, um, just more clients that, are are more serious about you know starting business with us um and just you know staying active on social media um you know we just we were on facebook instagram um we just started on pinterest uh you know really trying to stay active on linkedin uh posting engaging things um you know not just a static photo and mm -hmm. um really you know trying to get more into video um about the last half of 2018, we started kind of blindly going into video um, with, you know, just really trying to navigate it and figure out, you know, the right way. And now we, we feel like we have a good grasp on it. Um, so just trying to go full speed with that. Um, and, you know, we also, you know, we, we do a weekly tip video. We have a closed group for dental marketing where other dentists, you know, can, um, talk and share and um, communicate better. So really just trying to be everywhere um, so that we can reach everybody um, is yeah. one of our, you know, um, big pushes for 2019. That's, that's great. Like not, not only just going and finding communities to be a part of, but, but creating your, your own communities and uh, trying to foster engagement that way. That's, that's a phenomenal insight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so ne next, uh, I have kind of a shameless plug, but, uh, auditing and pitching, uh, prospective clients. So if pitching new business is something that you or your agency tends to struggle with, uh, and you plan on checking out WordStream, please don't do so without also looking at the new business center. Uh, we released it toward the end of last year. It's a place where you can, upload a lead, you can audit their accounts using the Google Ads Grader, the Facebook Ads Grader. You can put together a pitch for them using data from that, and then it, it makes your own selling process uh, infinitely easier. So you can leverage some white-labeled graders. You can funnel that data into your, uh, into your pitch, and then you can close some, some phenomenal dental clients or spa clients or plumber clients or whatever space you decide to, uh, to work in. Jeff, do you guys use the, uh, use the, the grader at all in your own prospecting? Um, yeah, I, it's, it's a great tool when we have a client who's, you know, might be leaving another, um, marketing agency. Um, but they were seeing a little bit of success. They might just not have fit well with that agency, so they want to bring their account over. Um, it's it's a great tool um, to just kind of get an overall look at their account, um, you know, and be able to see where I need to work on first, um, what needs work, um, and it just it saves me a lot of time instead of going in there manually and having to look at everything and figure out, you know, what needs the the TLC. 
couldn't have said it better myself. So you've pitched a client. They've decided that they are absolutely in love with what you have to say. They want to hire you. Now what? Uh, you need to highlight, well, of course, after you've delivered some results for this client because the wonderful information that they get when you pitch them is is accurate and you do a phenomenal job for them. Once you have succeeded for them, you have to highlight that success. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, investing in things like case studies or collateral from your, your agency's client work that speaks to your services in the, the context of your vertical uh, can be incredibly valuable. So Golden Proportions does this uh, within both both written and video form. Uh, you can also do like some creative stuff with carousel ads, for example, and use them to storyboard out a testimonial or a problem, how you addressed it, and an end result. Uh, case studies have near infinite application when you're targeting small audiences. Like I mentioned before, you don't have to deal with any of the issues that somebody who works with both uh, B2B lead gen and e-commerce clients might face. Uh, so if you plan on verticalizing, definitely invest in, in case studies as, as a way to market your, your agency. Um, you're also going to want to try to speak at conferences. So there are small local conferences, there are massive multinational conferences that uh, it's worth either attending just to mingle and shake hands and kiss babies and learn more of the challenges that people in your, your space are facing, uh, or actually get on a stage, talk to people, and uh, build a name for your agency in hopes of, of leveraging that appeal to, to win new business down the road. Finally, uh, you want to take all of these techniques, combine them, and grow. When you have the ability to duplicate fundamentals of your accounts, you can funnel all of the success you have for your clients, uh, market your own business, take the scale of a paid search account, duplicate it, you can ship business manager, and scale without having to hire headcount opportunities all city in the same state, country, there. Uh, the seven steps to verticalizing your agency that we just reviewed are as follows. Uh, research, uh, go even deeper with that research, develop a strategy that scales, prospect with purpose, uh, audit and pitch efficiently, uh, make sure that you highlight your successes and leverage them uh, in collateral for agency growth, and then put it all together to duplicate and scale efficiently. Jeff, any any last words on on putting this practice uh, to use? Um, yeah, I, I think the most important thing is when you verticalize is become an expert in it and make it known and prove it. Um, you know, share free resources, do webinars, Facebook lives, case studies. You know, um, prove that you know everything you can about that niche and that you're the experts in it. Um, you know, dentists are already gonna, you know, look at us and only dental marketing agency over another marketing agency who might deal with, you know, everybody. Um, but, you know, showing that we're experts in it, um, I think just goes a long way and really proving that we've helped, you know, tons of other dentists, um, and we can do the same for you. Beautiful. <laughs> and that's it. All right. Thanks, guys. That was super, super great. There was so much information there. Jeff, you, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. It was awesome to get a perspective of someone who's actually putting this method into practice and seeing success in it. Um, so while we wait for some questions to come in, I did want to just say to everyone on the line, we have a special offer um, today. You know, 
we just talked about how pitching new business and prospecting is a job in and of itself. And you guys already have so many other things to do throughout the day. So we're kind of offering everyone on the line a consultation with one of our experts here at WordStream to review the new business center, the proposal generator, help make that pitching process even easier, the auditing process with our graders. Um, super easy um, and helpful to, to just like streamline your work week. Um, but while you guys are given an answer to that, why don't we run through some questions that came through during the presentation? Um, so, you know, you briefly talked about the biggest concern in terms of verticalizing is that risk of your clients being competitors against one another. Do either of you have any strategies to kind of avoid that or, um, or at least just maybe geofencing or something like that that can help you still make that work for people that are nearby. Fire away, Jeff. Um, yeah, it, it's going to happen. Um, and you might find areas that you are targeting that you just, you have to, you know, not target in that area anymore because it's so saturated. Um, and then if you have somebody who's literally down the street from one of your other clients, um, you know, you have, you have, you kind of have to just look at that and say, are they, are they so close to one another that they're going to be competing? You're going to be competing with yourself essentially. Um, and they're going to be competing with each other. Um, you know, be honest with that client that's, you know, coming to talk to you, say, you know, we work with a client who works down the street from you. Um, you know, if you don't want to tell them their name, that's fine. But, um, I think being honest, um, right from the get-go might still keep them on um, despite, you know, you working with their competitor. Um, and just try not to use, you know, uh, secrets from one client to, you know, work for the other client. Um, just, you know, try to be as honest uh, and to deal with those situations when they come up. Great. Totally. Transparency. Yeah. It works in every vertical. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then one last question that I saw come through was, you know, if someone is just starting out this um, kind of strategy and really wants to go into verticalizing, is there a channel that's easiest to duplicate across clients or a place to start that's better than another for a beginner? I think it's going to oh. depend yeah. on vertical. Um, I, since the thing that I know best is paid search. I would default to paid search just because uh, using a tool like like Editor, it's it's super easy to take the keywords campaign structure from one account, dump it into a different account, and then swap out any uh, any different kinds of parameters. But uh, Jeff, do you have a different answer, or would you lean towards? No, I was I was lines? basically going to say the same thing. I think that's um, one of the easiest ways to go. Um, you know, Facebook too. Anything you can easily duplicate um, within that product um, is just going to save you a ton of time. Um, and then once you have that one nailed down, start venturing out into other ones. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you. That's about all the time we have to, for today. Um, and again, just to remind everyone who's still on the line, this was recorded and we'll send the recording and slide deck to your inboxes within the next 48 hours. So thanks again to Jeff for joining us and we hope to see you all on our next live webinar. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Thank you guys.